If you're using large language models in production, you'll want a way to log the prompts and the responses. This is useful to evaluate the performance and check for quality in the responses. And it's also useful to gather data that can later be used for fine tuning. This is true whether you're using private models like OpenAI or Anthropic or your own custom fine tuned model. Now, there are a number of approaches, including using services like BrainTrust or HumanLoop or using libraries like Langfuse, which provide a hosted offering and also offer a way for you to do it on a self-hosted basis. But today I'm going to show you a very simple approach that allows you to take any OpenAI style endpoint and ensure that all of the data is being logged to a Postgres database. You can run that Postgres database locally, or you can run it on a server, for example, on DigitalOcean. I've put the scripts up on Trellis OpenAI Logger. This is an open source and public repo on GitHub. It's also a package that has been pushed to PyPy, so you can easily install this with pip install Trellis OpenAI Logger. I'll start by showing you a very quick example of how to use this logger to log the results or the response that comes back from a quick chat completion. And then I'll show you how to set up a local database very quickly and also set up a database in two different ways using DigitalOcean. Now I've just git cloned the repo over into Windsurf and I've opened up the readme here and I want to show you how to quickly start and use the Trellis OpenAI logger. It's very, very much the same as if you're normally importing the OpenAI library. So instead of importing OpenAI from the original library, you import it from Trellis OpenAI logger and you use it in very much the same way. You set up a client by initiating it with OpenAI you pass in optionally your API key and your base URL if you're going to be using your own custom URL or API key. If you're just using OpenAI, you don't need to specify these. But there's one extra parameter you pass in when initializing your client, which is the Postgres uh, URL here. And here I've just put in a local Postgres database, but I'm going to show you how, how to also put in a remote one that's running on a DigitalOcean server. So let me show you a very quick example I'm going to set up a temporary folder. I'll just make a directory here called temp and I'll move into that temporary directory. Then I'll create a virtual environment of UVVenv and I'll install Trellis OpenAI Logger, which is just like installing OpenAI because this is a wrapper that will send and log your data to Postgres. Now I'm going to run a simple script that will import OpenAI, define a client, point to the Postgres database that I've set up locally. I'll show you how to do that later and get a response from OpenAI using GPT 4.1 Mini and print the response. So I'm going to copy all of this. Now, before I do that, there's one more step I need to do, which is export my OpenAI API key. So I need to paste it in there. I'm just going to do that off screen now. Okay, I've um, entered my API key and now I'm ready to start a Python interpreter. You could just save this little script to a file and do uv run the script.py. I'll paste in that little snippet and press enter. And you can see I get back a response and it's got the answer one and two added is three. So that's good. And I'll exit now my interpreter with control D. So at this point, I've just sent a query to OpenAI and now it should be logged. We can take a look at what the log looks like. If we go all the way down to um, a section here on querying the logs. We can connect to the Postgres database locally, and I'll go through this more slowly in a moment. And we can then make a query to inspect the last uh, conversation, just like this. And here you can see the first, the latest record. So you can see the time, the model, the input messages, of which there's just one. The system message would be there if it existed. The assistant response, there's no tool calls, the latency, and the total tokens. So there you have a very simple example. And now I'm going to show you how you can set up that local database or how you can point Trellis OpenAI Logger to a database that's running on a digital ocean droplet. So first I'll show you that local setup. Just go to the database section and you're going to have to set up some environment variables. Already um, you can add in your OpenAI key. This will be handy for testing uh, in the same way that I just tested out with the quick demo above. And also you should set a secure password. I recommend not using your secure password. You should put in something else. So you want to create a .env file with these variables. You can just copy paste this code and run it if you wish. 
Next, we'll actually set up the local Postgres database. If you're on Mac, you do brew install Postgres version 15 and start the service. You can find the instructions for Windows or Ubuntu on, on ChatGPT. Next, we're going to create a database. Now, it'll probably say it'll fail because I've already created it. That's fine. And once it's created, we're going to run this uh, local setup here. Now, I actually should be back here in the logger folder. And I'll run the setup. And just to show you what's happening with the local setup here, we're installing dbmate, which is being used to update uh, the database to the structure we want. We're then setting a database URL for dbmate, which will help us with the migrations. And then we're running the migrations. And the migrations are set here in this db migrations folder. And it's setting up the way that we store the data. So we want to store the model name, the endpoint, the input messages, which is a list of messages, raw response, uh, latency, status code, prompt tokens, completion tokens, total tokens, and then metadata. So this is the format that we're going to store everything in. And then we can run a quick test just to check that the lo local database is working. And it looks like it is because we successfully connected. That's a simple connection text test. And if you do want to delete that database, you can do drop DB with LLM logs. So this is how we create the local database. If you want to do a test, you can go to logging traces and you can run a ready-made script I have, which is just example.py. So to run that, uh, you first want to source the environment variables, which basically will pass in the database a password and then run example.py. And when we check this here, I, this is not working because in my environment variables, I have got an old database URL. And this is actually the correct approach to use if we're going to run from a droplet because we want to point to a remote URL. But we can just set the database URL for the local uh, database like this here uh, at the same time as running. So if we just take this command, I should have used the local command here because we are trying to run the local database. You can run it. And what it does is it sends a request. I'll show you the code in a moment. It gets a response, and then it logs it. And the request you can see here in example.py, uh, it's getting the connection info for the database from a URL. It's testing the connection. And then it's going to load up the database URL and create a client using that URL. It's creating a Travis OpenAI logger client. And then it's getting a response to a simple question here, which just says, hello. And then it's going to query the log data to make sure that it is actually present and telling us that it has successfully logged and found logs within the database. So that's just a simple script you can run to test uh, your database is working. If you want to more manually query the database, you can do exactly what we did uh, in the quick start example, which is connecting to the database. This is how to connect to the local one. And then you can run a simple SQL command like this. And it should show us, uh, let's just run that again. It should show us uh, the last request. Indeed, it says hello, and here's the response, and the latency, and then the total tokens. So that's how you set up a local database pretty fast. I'll now show you ways to set up a remote database. This is what you would want to do in production. You want to have a server that is saving your logs. You want those logs to be stored on that server, and then you can retrieve them later. And I'll talk much more about retrieving the logs and how to use them for doing evals and doing fine tuning in a later video. So let's look at how we set up a remote database this time, a remote Postgres database. And for that, we'll go up to option two. Now, there are basically two ways you can do this with DigitalOcean, and the same would apply if you're looking at other providers. Uh, you could run an AWS instance, you could run an Azure or Google Cloud. The simplest, uh, well, I don't know what is simplest, but let me describe the two ways. The first way is you set up a Ubuntu server and you'd install Postgres and you use that as your database. The second approach is DigitalOcean and other providers will directly provide databases. And so you can directly set up a database using DigitalOcean. That's called a managed database. Now, if you set up a droplet, it will probably be a little bit cheaper. Um, but the managed database has more capabilities, things like backups, for example. Now, you can enable backups on a standard droplet too, but the managed database probably has got more tailored functionality for running databases robustly. 
So maybe use this if you're doing a more serious production application. I'll also note that to run Postgres uh, comfortably, you probably want to have two gigabytes minimum of, of RAM, maybe four, uh, ideally four to eight. So it's going to be hard to run it with the $6 per month um, droplet. And therefore, probably it's going to be about $12 per month if you go with the specs that are like this here in my default. So I'll show you how to run both. First, we're going to make sure that the DigitalOcean client is installed with brew install doc uh, TL or DOCTL. That's DigitalOcean client. And we're going to then authenticate. So for this, when you run it, you'll be asked for an API key and then you're going to log in. Now to connect to your droplet, you're going to need to have an SSH key. So we're going to create an SSH key and then we're going to add it to DigitalOcean so it can be used to access the droplet. So here's how you would generate an SSH key. I've already generated this one and here's how you would add it uh, to DigitalOcean. Okay, and with the SSH key generated, we can now proceed to the automated scripts for creating the droplet. Uh, so I'm just going to run those and then I'll go over to that script and explain how it works. It will delete any droplets of the same name if you've created any in advance. So that's what it's doing right there because I had created one for testing earlier. And then it should move to starting up the next droplet. I'll show you now what that startup script looks like. This is the create droplet script here. It's going to start off by setting up uh, the droplet name, the SSH key name, that's a default, um, a database password, which will be grabbed from your .env file. And I rec my, recommend customizing it. If there is none, it's going to then use this default, not very secure password here. So here is a quick validation and a warning if it's using the default password. Then it's going to create an SSH key if it doesn't exist already and you haven't created it. And once that is created, it'll move on to delete any droplet that has the same name. Then it's going to create a cloud initialization configuration. This is going to allow us to run the migrations. So these migrations match the migrations in the migration file here. I know this isn't ideal really from a coding standpoint. You should have one source of truth. Uh, so if you do need to update the migrations, you do need to do it in two places right now. And there's a warning on that in the readme. But this format here matches the logging format we talked about before. And once uh, this cloud init has been set up, um, I should mention also that dbmate is going to be installed because that's what, what's actually running the migrations. The migrations directory needs to be uh, specified. Then there's going to be a symlink here for dbmate's expected structure. So this is allowing dbmate to um, run the migrations. And once we've run the migrations, then uh, we have to define the run command, which is going to involve creating this database here. First of all, starting Postgres, creating the database, then updating the password, making sure the listen addresses are set, uh, creating the cryptography extension, and then restarting Postgres here. And then we're going to run uh, the setup DB script, which uh, should allow us to have the database in the right format with the correct tables. So with that script defined, this is a script that will run uh, after initialization, after the droplet is uh, created. We then actually create the droplet here. We're going to specify a 2GB droplet with this droplet name. And once the droplet is ready, we're then going to, uh, well, the cloud init should start. Once the droplet is ready, we'll get the IP. We'll then create the droplet and we'll print out the droplet IP and the connection string once that's all been done. Then we'll have to make, wait a minute or two for the droplet to be fully set up uh, before we're able to uh, update the database URL and then run the example on that remote droplet. So you can see uh, here, this matches what you can see in the script. We've got the, the droplet being created. We've got this database URL. I'm just going to copy this over into my .env file now. And with that done, I can try sourcing my environment variables and running the example. So it looks like we've successfully connected to the remote and we've logged this example here. And again, we can connect manually to see the logs if we like. This time, rather than connecting to the local database, we can source the environment variables, which will set the database URL and connect in this way. So now we're connected to the remote database. And again, we can use this query to check what is logged and see uh, the contents of that latest log here. Okay, so we now have shown how to set up a remote database using a droplet. 
and how to query the logs from it. I'll show you now the last way to set up the Postgres database, which is by directly creating a database on DigitalOcean. Uh, just before then, if you want to clean up your droplet, you can run this clean up droplet script. Uh, first, you need to exit from the Postgres, which uh, I can do here, just with Control D or uh, slash Q. So let me now clean up that droplet and move to setting up a direct managed database. I'm going to say no, I won't delete the SSH key from DigitalOcean. So for a managed database, um, I'll take you through the steps here. First thing is we're literally going to create a database using the creation command from DigitalOcean. We're going to call it LLM Logger DB. And once we've got that created, we're going to try and get um, the connection URL. Now, actually, the connection URL is already available. So you don't, if you want to get it, again, you could run this command, but we can actually find the details here. And you want to put this into your .env file. And I recommend putting it in between uh, double quotes. So the way you want to paste it in is something like this here. So I'm going to take that and put it into my .env file. OK, so with that added into my .env file, I can now um, source that database URL and run this script manage DB setup. And all this does is it runs the migrations that are in the DB migrations folder. So this is setting up the structure again that we want the logs to be stored in. Now, I can't run this just yet because I need to wait until, until the database has uh, started up. I can maybe try it and we'll see. So yeah, it's saying no such host. And that's just because the database needs a moment to start up. Once it is started up, though, it will install dbmate, run the migrations, and then we should be ready to test the connection. And I've just given it a moment so I can run this uh, script again. And I think that is run successfully, so we're in a position to run the example file. It's connecting to the remote database, and you can see it's connecting this time to the manage db on DigitalOcean, and it's logging. And yet again, we can go down to the logging section of the readme, and we can query those logs, first by connecting to the database, by sourcing environment variables, and then by running our command here. And we should be able to now see, again, let me just run that. And you can see here the log of the command that we've run through the example. So that rounds up the three different ways that you can create a database very quickly with Postgres locally using a droplet, the cheapest approach that has Postgres installed, or directly creating a database on DigitalOcean. And you now are able to very easily log all of the traces, including the response times and the token usage of any queries you make to an OpenAI style API. I've just shown you how to use actual OpenAI's API, but you can also use any other APIs that provide you with an OpenAI style endpoint. In the next video or in a future video, I'm going to cover how to use these traces. They're incredibly useful for evaluating the performance of your services. They're also very useful if you need to do some fine tuning because you can take these responses from customers, you can filter out the private data potentially, and then you can improve on the answers and use those to improve the performance of your LLMs through fine tuning. That's it for this video, folks. Hope you enjoyed it and let me know your questions below in the comments. Cheers.